Jimmy hang around pretty regularly, and he always wanted to try to get the band back together. And I was like, no fucking way. I grew up listening to ACDC and Pink Floyd and, um, you know, classic rock, things like that. And then I started loving Hank Williams and Louis Armstrong and people like that. And I was just thinking, God, wouldn't that be great if, if like, ACDC played Hank Williams tunes or, like, Hank Williams, you know, like sang lead for, uh, for ACDC. <laughs> Basically, I just wanted to have like a rock and roll band that sounded like they're influenced by 20s and 30s blues and jazz. Plus, there's Tom Waits, like showed me, like you can take a song that's 300 years old, like those chord progressions, and make it your own style of music completely. I was going to DePaul. I was, the, uh, I was a music performance major, and um, I really didn't want to do that. Because like at the back of an orchestra, there's 12 upright basses, but you can't hear any of them. I was looking for an upright bass player, and then I thought, yeah, tall blonde would work. That'd be good. Dan said all the right things. Like he said, Tom Waits. He said, uh, you know, Hank Williams. I was looking for an excuse to drop out of school, and uh, I just, you know, fell in love with, with his songwriting. Plus, like you know, he made me sing, which I never thought I'd be able to do. found Jimmy through an ad in the reader. When I read the reader, bastardized blues, country, waltz, jazz, rock, punk, the girl I was living with, the woman I was living with, when, with that description, bastardized country, blues, waltz, jazz, whatever. She's like, call that, call that. first joined the band, Dan told me if I was a drummer, I would listen to nothing but John Bonham and Sabbath. And when he, said, when he told me that, that's all I listened to. After that, it just really gelled. When we started playing with him, it just opened up everything. And it felt like the closest thing that I've ever played with, uh, like John Bonham, the playing swing beats, you know? <laughs> I was dating Dan's brother, and then we all just started hanging out. So I sang with them at the double door, and then I just, uh, it just felt really, really good. And then eventually I started coming to practices, and, and yeah, we just started coming up with some really killer three-part harmonies.
I wanted somebody to sing with. Like I would do all the four tracks, like you know, just by myself, and it was like he was impossible to teach how to uh, how to how to sing uh, harmonies. I'd always played acoustic guitar, and then uh, Danny and I went over to Midwest Buy and Sell, and I bought my first electric guitar, which Connie. I'm still playing. We, her name is Connie. Oh. My Silvertone. Then all of a sudden she started playing this like amazing shit in the studio. Like one of the most beautiful solos I've ever heard in my entire life is on uh, Dear Little Girl. I love Nora's guitar style because it never overplays and it's super tasteful. Everything was really immediate. We met you in um, maybe October, and then you came like oh, like a month and a half after that, right? Yeah. And then I think we uh, signed with Bloodshot like in June or something. We were always associated with Bloodshot because we were playing at Lounge X. The women that owned that place just booked us with a bunch of uh, Bloodshot bands. And Nan and Rob would be like, they're not on our label. But we just kind of got associated with them a lot. What I remember from Bloodshot was that um, they wanted us to get our live show together. And we did that. And then um, after we got our live show together, they signed us. It took a little while like, to figure out if we were all going to work together. Rob had a concern about, he's like, you know, you guys aren't an all country band, but you're going to get lumped in. It's like, did that bother you? And then that was a concern for them because they were like, that was what they really wanted to do. But um, like, I think you said, I'm tired of losing sleep over it. Let's do a record. So they're like, all right, we got to put the record out. We got to get that stuff done. And we got some kind of order, like you can't use the Black Family. There's oh, another group in Ireland. Really? Yeah. Mary Black. You ever hear Mary Black? Yeah, her band is Her Black bitch family. family. <laughs> <laughs> we, were all, we were all really upset. We had a week to come up with a new name. When it's gone, no one gets late. So. Actually, I got a tattoo of it. I was so heartbroken that I got fucking black family in my fucking arm. That's when I joined, black family. We're still not over it, actually. They never interfered or made any suggestions at all. Which was weird because I thought somebody's putting up all this money, they're going to be, you know, making suggestions. So I was like, wow, they're really hands Artistic off. freedom. Yeah, it was, it was really great. I know I love daddy And I saw 